the basics of testing gold and silver and identifying fake bullion. As a buyer of physical gold and silver, one of the biggest questions you will need to answer is how do I know if my bullion is genuine? Your first consideration should be to buy from a reputable bullion dealer with a track record of delivering a good customer experience. It is also useful to understand how gold and silver can be tested. Key to this knowledge would be the understanding of material properties. Like every element on the periodic table, precious metals like gold and silver have a unique set of properties. The common properties that are used to test gold and silver are density, the speed of sound, the conductivity, and magnetic susceptibility. In addition, X-ray spectrography is sometimes used for surface testing. Let us look at each material property and the associated tests for that property. Density Very often counterfeit bullion to be optimized to match the density of gold or silver. This is because weighing scales and comparisons with genuine bars are common ways to check if bullion is genuine. If a bar or coin weighs the same and has the same size as the corresponding genuine bullion, then it passes the density test. The fish coin tester, which was a popular way to test the density of bullion coins, is based on this principle. However, testing for density by itself is not very reliable because it is not difficult to make fake bullion pass that density test. This is best illustrated by gold bars that turn out to be made of tungsten. From this table of material properties, you'll notice that the density of gold and tungsten are extremely close, with the density of gold being 19.30 grams per cubic centimeter, while tungsten's density is 19.25 grams per cubic centimeter. This means that a 1-ounce gold bar and a 1-ounce tungsten bar will look very similar in dimensions, and if you weigh them, they will yield the similar results on a scale. Thus, fake bars tend to be made of tungsten with a thick gold coating. Ultrasound As sound travels at varying speeds in different types of material, the speed of sound, also known as the celerity, can be used to test if bullion is genuine. This is done by using ultrasound equipment which generate preset sound waves into the tested material using a probe. The sound waves will accelerate or decelerate depending on the material they are passing through in accordance to their celerity. Counterfeit bullion that are optimized for density can be easily detected using ultrasound. For example, when gold and tungsten may have similar densities, you can see from this table that sound travels at 5,220 meters per second in tungsten, but only 3,240 meters per second in gold. That's a difference of 61%. This makes it very easy to detect the gold-plated tungsten bar because an ultrasound test on a 1 centimeter gold bar would return an ultrasound reading of only 0.61 centimeters. This principle also applies to silver. Here we have a silver bar that is cut in two. One half has silver hollowed out and filled with lead. Reference measurements of the thickness of silver in both halves were taken using a digital caliper. With an ultrasound test, the thickness of both halves are easily verified and the lower thickness measurement would have alerted the tester of an adulterated bar. Ultrasound will also detect air pockets and other bar anomalies, which is why ultrasound is used extensively to check plane bodies for invisible material stresses. Thus, conducting a density test together with an ultrasound test make a powerful bullion testing combination. It's important to know that ultrasound testing gives accurate results only when there is a direct contact between the probe and the tested material. It will not work if the bullion is sealed with plastic packaging. Bars of different sizes also require different probes of varying frequencies for optimal testing. Ultrasound works well for pure metals such as 99.9% .9 gold, but it's less effective on lower purity bullion such as American Eagles, which are only 91.6% pure and contain other metals that skew the results. ECM Different materials also have varying electrical conductivity. For example, gold is 2.4 times more conductive than tungsten. 
This variance can be easily detected using an electrical conductivity measurement or ECM test. ECM is especially effective for silver because silver is the most conductive metal in existence. Thus, it is impossible to make fake silver bars that are tested with properly administered ECM tests. Unlike ultrasound tests, which require direct contact with the sample materials, electrical conductivity measurement tests are able to effectively test materials even through thin plastic packaging. We have supplied ECM testing equipment to most pawn shops in Singapore as they are easy to operate and provide results quickly. Due to its common usage for testing, counterfeits have tried to produce fake gold bars that are optimized to pass an ECM test. These counterfeit bars use copper because it has a similar conductivity to gold. However, the density of copper is only 8.94 grams per cubic centimeter, making gold somewhat twice denser than copper. Due to the density differences, fake bars optimized to pass ECM tests would be more than twice the size of genuine gold bars. Such counterfeit bars therefore rely on their packaging with fake certificate information to trick inexperienced buyers into not noticing their larger size. Counterfeit bullion optimized to pass ECM tests are likely to remain a rare oddity as they can be easy to detect visually. They do, however, illustrate the importance of doing multiple tests for different material properties rather than solely relying on a single test. Like ultrasound, ECM works best with highly pure gold and silver bars. Alloyed bullion with lower purity will skew results and make it easier for counterfeiters to create their own alloys to pass ECM tests. Magnetic Susceptibility Another effective way to detect faked gold and silver is with a magnetic test. This is because both gold and silver are diamagnetic metals, which means they are repelled by magnets rather than attracted to them. Paramagnetic metals, such as tungsten on the other hand, attracts magnets, albeit weaker than ferromagnetic metals such as iron or nickel. It is therefore possible to check whether a bar has tungsten inside by placing a magnet next to it and measuring whether it is attracted or repelled. In this example, you can see how such a test works as a sample material is passed over the tester. This setup can easily detect fake silver coins. When a genuine American Silver Eagle coin is placed over the magnet, a positive reading is shown by the scale. A fake American Silver Eagle coin containing either paramagnetic or ferromagnetic metals will yield a negative reading when placed in the same way over the setup. X-ray The composition of bullion can also be determined by using an X-ray fluorescence or XRF spectrometer. It uses X-rays to quickly and reliably identify the metals present on a sample surface and provide purity readings. However, X-ray fluorescence tests are only surface tests as they bounce off the surface without penetrating into the tested material. Therefore, unlike an ultrasound test which is well able to detect counterfeit bars having only a gold surface layer, an X-ray fluorescent test may give an incorrect result as it is unable to detect what is inside the bar. Foreign material deposited on the tested spot on the surface of the sample material can also affect the accuracy of the X-ray fluorescent test. For example, a gold maple leaf coin which is 99.99% purity may show a 99.6 reading if scratches or other factors had left foreign deposits on the coin surface even though there is nothing wrong with the mass of gold inside the coin. The key to having reliable results with the non-destructive testing of gold and silver is to combine three different methods of testing to reliably weed out counterfeit bullion. Two different types of tests should be sufficient as long as one of them includes an ECM test or an ultrasound test to actively scan the interior of the sample. This is because it is very difficult to create fake gold and silver of high purity with two similar material properties such as density, celerity, electrical conductivity, or magnetic susceptibility perfectly. It is nearly impossible to create fake gold and silver with three similar properties. Limitations of Non-Destructive Testing 
Silver Bullion has tested millions of ounces of precious metals at our testing lab within our vault, the safe house. Here are three notable case studies which we would like to share with you to expand your knowledge with regards to possible outline outcomes you may encounter with testing gold and silver. Case 1. 99.86% pure 1 ounce Canadian gold maple leaf coins. We encountered a case where the X-ray testing results for 1 ounce Canadian gold maple leaf coin consistently yielded a 99.86% reading. In order to better understand what was wrong with this coin, we sent it for a destructive fire assay. The assayer drilled holes in the coin and melted the drill shavings before testing its purity. The test results came back as 99.99% pure. This made us realize that the X-ray test had probably detected foreign material on the surface of the coin, which caused the reading to be off. This is a good example of why X-ray readings by themselves are not always conclusive. Case 2. Soviet-era LBMA Good Delivery Bars during a customer's incoming transfer of silver bars, we received three tons of Soviet-era 1,000-ounce LBMA Good Delivery Polish bars made back in 1986. Our X-ray tests showed only 96% purity readings. Attempting to test these bars with ultrasound also had its challenges as many of these old silver bars were very porous. They had to be tested underwater to allow water to fill the holes in order to achieve a proper ultrasound reading using specialized probes that operated at lower than normal frequencies. The ultrasound test showed that they were silver, but it was difficult to determine the actual purity. As the test results were not conclusive, we could not accept these bars into our storage. We agreed with the sending party to have a refiner recast these bars into new ones. The customer therefore received brand new bars to replace these old Soviet era bars. The episode illustrated how non-destructive testing hits its limits when bars are very porous. Case 3. 1 kg gold bars that failed ultrasound tests We also had a case where a 1 kg bar that was transferred to us by a customer consistently failed ultrasound tests. With the customer's permission, we sent the gold bars to the refiner that manufactured the bar and they replaced them with new bars for our customer. The refiner also cut the bars and analyzed them. Their findings revealed the presence of tiny pores inside the bars. It was noteworthy that these gold bars had a full 1 kilogram of gold. They were made slightly larger and were within the allowed technical specifications. This is because gold bars are always cast to be slightly larger than specification and are then dipped into progressively lighter acid baths to leach away gold until the exact mass specification is reached. Testing of bullion is not a common industry practice. It is a common industry practice for vault operators to store bullion on a said to contain basis. This means that the vault operators are not responsible for testing if the bullion stored are genuine. This is not the case with Silver Bullion's vault, the safe house, which is the only entity we are aware of that does extensive testing of bullion and stores the bullion on a known good basis. Currently, we store over 8 million ounces of gold and silver. All bullion transferred by customers for storage in our vault undergoes a ducts testing process, which does three of the five tests described above before they are accepted into our storage program. Once customers' bullion are stored with us, they are automatically covered by our genuinity guarantee which replaces any questionable bullion one for one in the very unlikely event that we failed in our testing processes. Bullion that was bought from us or has been transferred into us is also eligible for our secured peer-to-peer -peer loan program, which allows bullion owners to borrow US dollars or Singapore dollars against their bullion at low interest rates, typically ranging from two to 5% per year, depending on the loan duration. Our customers would also be able to sell their bullion back to us at a moment's notice since the origin and authenticity of the bullion has already been established. The usefulness of testing bullion on a large scale is further enhanced because testing results are reliably recorded and tracked. Silver Bullion's testing lab at our vault, the safe house, maintains a database of tolerances 
for bullion type tested, as well as test results for millions of ounces of precious metals tested. Tested bullion are identified either by the serial number of the bullion, the tamper evident parcel ID, or the tamper evident label showing its unique ducks test ID. Test results are made public at our website and can be retrieved using either the parcel ID or this ducks test ID. Common misunderstandings. Do not overly rely on certificates. It is common for some refiners to issue a certificate of authenticity together with gold or silver bars. However, bullion is itself its own certificate as investment grade bars always have the metal type, name of refiner, purity and weight engraved on it. Serial numbers are also engraved for certain bullion bars. A piece of paper repeating the details engraved on the bar is therefore mostly a marketing tool that exists only because people request for them thinking that it makes the bar more authentic. Unfortunately, these certificates can give customers a false sense of confidence which is exploited by counterfeiters. In our experience, nearly every fake bar will come with a certificate to lure buyers into this false sense of security. Therefore, emphasis should not be placed on such paper certificates. Provenance checking and testing of bullion are much more relevant. Do not rely on packaging. You may have come across monster boxes of silver coins such as those for the American Eagle silver coin and the Canadian Maple Leaf silver coins. These monster boxes contain 500 pieces of one ounce silver coins in them and they would arrive from the mint with white straps on them. These straps are often referred to as seals by dealers, but in practice, they are just strappings that can be easily applied with the strapping machine. So if you are buying a strap monster box of American Eagles or Canadian Maple Leaf silver coins from someone, you can either trust that person or request to have the coins tested. Therefore, it is important that you purchase bullion from trusted sources as it will give you peace of mind with your bullion purchases. Here's a recap of the important points to take note when it comes to testing gold and silver. Your first defense against counterfeit bullion is to buy bullion only from trusted sources. Never rely on only one method of testing. Now that you have had a better understanding of material properties, use two or three different testing methods for greater certainty. While non-destructive testing works in most scenarios, realize that they do have their limitations as well. Testing a bullion is not a common industry practice as many vault operators store bullion on a said to contain basis only. Do not overly rely on certificates or packaging because these can be easily faked. Arm yourself with knowledge of material properties and common testing methods for gold and silver and you will be in a better position to truly secure your wealth.